Hey guys. So, so I'm here this morning because number one, I have a long day of filming and it's 7.46 in the morning. But I wanted to make sure that one of my first videos that I filmed today was this one because this one is very important to me. I've been mentioning on Snapchat on and off, and if you have me on Facebook, you guys know that I've been going through quite a bit over the past two months. I've been going through a lot over the past few months as a whole. Like, I don't think I've had a steady month where nothing has happened. But then again, that's my life. Like, my life has always been that way, so it's nothing new to me. So, I'm gonna get straight into it. I'm here today because some things have come up that I never in my life once thought I would ever be going through. So as of this month, I am two months late on my period. If you would have asked me how I felt before last Friday, I would have been like, I'm excited but I'm nervous because I've taken tests to see if I was pregnant. They've all come out negative, which led me to getting a blood test. That came out negative, but my thyroid came out very healthy and it came out positive with no issues. And then I was scheduled to get an ultrasound and that's when things kind of went downhill. So before I get into anything else, let me just give you some backstory. So I started my period when I was like 12 or 13, I'm pretty sure if not 11, I was very, very young. And ever since then, until my first miscarriage, I had regular periods, like clockwork. I knew exactly when they were supposed to come, and if they were late, it was by like a day. Up until my first miscarriage a couple of years ago, obviously miscarriages can really throw your system off. It took my body a while after that first miscarriage to really get back into the swing of things, of being on a regular schedule when it came to being in my period. I was irregular for, I wanna say a good year after my miscarriage. It took a while, like I said. But then I noticed that slowly, things would pick back up and I would just go back to being on a clockwork schedule for my period. So I, of course, have had pap smears and they've all come out really, really well. Everything looked healthy. Everything tested healthy. There was no issues. Everything was where it should be. So when I went to the ultrasound this past Friday and got the news that I did, I was very, very, very surprised. My mom has endometriosis and it was something that we both talked about for a long while that she was worried that I was going to have it when I grow older, which I don't have endometriosis. That's one thing that I'm thankful for because that is a painful thing to go through. I personally wouldn't know myself, but I've watched my mom go through it and I was there actually when we brought her home from the hospital after her procedure to get surgery done on everything down there in the lady bits and she was in writhing pain almost 24 hours a day like it was just it was it was incredibly hard for me to go through as a daughter to watch your mom be so helpless but at that point in time I was the only source of help that she had you know what I mean so I had to be there for my mom now the one thing that I'm holding on to is the fact that my mom has had three successful pregnancies myself my younger older brother and then my youngest brother so with what I'm going through right now which I'm gonna tell you right now is PCOS I at least have a little bit of light to look forward to a little glimmer of hope that I will become a mother someday. Now, this past Friday, I had an ultrasound to figure out if I was pregnant or if I was not pregnant because at that point, I had been taking tests like daily every morning with the first pee. I would test throughout the day, once in the middle of the day after a couple of hours of not having gone to the bathroom, then once at night, and then of course once in the morning. But my doctor told me to kind of like reassure me that everything was gonna be okay, that in some rare cases, some women, even though it's very obvious they're pregnant, they don't get a positive pregnancy test until seven months. So she's like, you could very well be one of those really rare cases. The body is a very weird thing and women's bodies are definitely a very weird thing. We work in mysterious ways. And don't think I'm saying weird as in weird bad. I'm talking about weird good because we are majestical creatures, ladies. We can make babies and we can withstand bleeding for an entire fucking week in some cases and not die. Like, that to me is incredible. But anyways, uh, fast forward to this past Friday. I had scheduled an ultrasound and this was supposed to be the definitive test and the definitive answer on whether or not I was pregnant and Nick and I were in the car on the way to Saradac Lake which is where my doctor's office is, my gynecologist's office is and we were discussing like what we were going to do if I was pregnant, like what needed to happen next and then of course we also discussed what was going to happen if I wasn't pregnant, like what would be causing these things. So I was mentally at least a little bit ready for anything, any situation that could have happened at this appointment but let's be real, when you already have it in your head that you would love to be pregnant, it's kind of hard to think of another situation that would be negative. So we pull into the parking lot for the hospital where the doctor's office is and immediately, almost immediately, it was like this overall feeling of this like impending doom that just came over my entire body. And my body, my mind, my body, I don't know what it is, but I always know when something bad's about to happen. Like I can always feel it. And even if it's not me, myself being like consciously aware of whatever is going to happen is going to happen, my body has these reactions to certain things that I just don't understand. But with every single thing that's happened in my life, 
life that has been negative, my body has had some sort of reaction to it before it even happens. And it happened that day and I knew something was not going to be okay. But I just kind of ignored those negative feelings and thought it was just me being nervous, which is very weird for me because I don't get nervous. I've performed in front of thousands and thousands of people at Disney World for the candlelight processional, and it didn't faze me in the slightest. We walk in, I do the paperwork, and then I get led into the ultrasound room. The doctor comes in with a nurse and explains to me the procedure, what's going to happen, and then I'm sitting in this chair with my legs on stirrups, and the doctor is talking to me, but I'm just, my mind is elsewhere. And of course, the procedure starts. And then I sit up, he tells the nurse to print something out, she leaves the room, and that's when things go bad for me. The doctor pulls up this little rolly chair, sits down in front of me, and sits like this. Now this, if you don't know what this is, this is the universal body language for I have some things to tell you that you probably don't want to hear. And instantaneously, I know for a fact that something is not right. So Doc is sitting there in front of me. I'm sitting partially naked in this chair, feeling very uncomfortable, very awkward, and very cold. And he tells me there is a large cyst on my left ovary. At this point, my mind is like, well, fuck. He then explains to me that is the reason why I haven't had a period in two months, but he assures me that this is something that happens every day to a lot of women. It's very common. And he tells me that this does not mean that I cannot have kids. However, it does make getting pregnant very hard. And that is the news that shatters me because more than anything in the world, and this is where I'm gonna get emotional, I know it, more than anything in the world, I've always wanted to be a mother. Now, because my mom went through this herself and I was there for all of it, I know that PCOS can lead to type 2 diabetes, ovarian cancer, and in some rare cases, it can lead to infertility. And even though Doc reassured me that we were going to take every step we could to make sure that I became pregnant in the near future, I know my luck. You know what I mean? Like, I know my life. I know what I've gone through. I know that things don't really always happen for me the way I want them to. And I'm not going to sit here and cry because of it, because you know what? At this point in my life, I have been very happy with the way my life has turned out. Given my childhood and how things were back then, my life could have been tragically different. And quite bluntly, I know that there are women out there who have things much, much worse than I do, so I won't sit here and cry about that, but, but the fact of the matter is, I am terrified that I will not be able to be a mother, which is the one thing that I want for myself in life, because when I was growing up, even though my mom and I have a relationship now, which I'm thankful for every single day, my mom wasn't there for me. She was never around until I was in middle school. I thank God every day that I had these strong women that I had in my life back then. My tia Kati, my abuelita Clary. I had so many people around me to make sure that I never felt the effects of not having my mother around. But even still, when it came to the days when my classmates would bring their parents to school, I would loathe those days more than anything else because it made me face the reality that my parents just weren't capable of being there. I would watch the other little girls in my class with their moms and their dads and they'd be so happy and laughing and playing board games. Meanwhile, I was in a corner keeping to myself, coloring and coloring books. Like, those days fucked me up more than anything in the world. And I remember feeling so sad. Now, my father was around, but because of his weight, my dad used to be morbidly obese. He was over 600 pounds. But this man, this man did not let his weight stop him. This man went to work every single day, woke up at the ass crack of dawn, didn't come home till it was pitch black dark outside, just to make sure that we had food on the table, clothes on our back, and a roof over our head. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. But my dad, like I said, did everything in his power to make sure that we were taken care of, even if he couldn't take care of us himself. And I always told myself, especially when I got older, that I would never be like my mother. I would never leave my children. I would never ignore them for years until I got older. Then I would go into their lives, which I know sounds very, very rude to say and very blunt, but we've had this talk. My mom and I are very, very open and I've told her exactly how I felt and everything I'm telling you guys right now, she knows already about how I feel. I would never leave my kids. I would never make them feel like they were abandoned for a long time time I felt like it was my fault that she had left. Like, I... It was very, very dark times in my life. I look back on those days when I was in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, but more specifically kindergarten because there was one teacher who I will never in my entire life ever forget. Her name was Miss Sermon. After I left Miss Sermon's class and I went to first, second grade, and, and then beyond that, obviously, I never had a teacher who cared as much as she did about me and my brother and the situation that we were born into. She was the only teacher who made sure that for the days when the parents were going to come in and hang out with their kids for the day, that 
we would never be left alone. She was always there with me. But I remember being in class, walking into class on the day of, and Mrs. Sermon would make sure that I had little snacks in the corner and she'd make sure that I had all these like coloring books and puzzles to do. And that woman would spend the majority of the day sitting with me at the table, making sure I wasn't by myself for that day. And I will never forget that ever in my entire life. That woman was an angel. And I wish I could say thank you to her now for everything that she did for me. She mothered me when my mom wasn't there to do so. Going back into the whole point of this video, uh, when I was younger, I always told myself that I would be 100% better than the mom that I had. As I got older, especially when I started my period for the first time, the only person I needed was my mom and she wasn't there for me. But I thank God, my angel of Atiyakati, she was there for me and she taught me everything. She took me shopping. She told me about what was gonna happen in my life because my first period was actually at a restaurant with my father. My brother and my dad's friend and I had my first period in a restaurant and I was wearing jeans and my dad called my got the right away and told her what was happening and she cried and I was crying I thought I was dying guys I literally looked down and just saw a big red spot and had no idea where the fuck it was coming from I was worried that I spilled juice in my jeans but then I realized there was still juice in my cup I was full panic mode. But my dad that same day rushed me to my tia Kati's house and dropped me off and he's like, this is yours now. <laughs> so if there were three women in my life that I was lucky enough to have when my mom was not around, it's my tia Kati, my abuelita Clari, and Mrs. Sermon. But anyways, guys, that's not my point. My point is these women were the women who really raised me to be the woman that I am today. And they are the role models that I have as far as what I want to be as a mother. And that's why it breaks my heart that this is happening to me now because I was so looking forward to jumping into motherhood and being a mom and I was so excited when my period was late and then this all this whole thing happens and it kind of just derailed everything but the bottom line is as much as I don't want to have to deal with this as much as I am scared and I am never scared I don't get scared unless it's a spider a shark a scorpion a snake Maybe I do get scared. So as of right now, I'm still trying to process what I was told Friday and I'm trying to deal with it and I know I have to make some life changes as far as diets and exercise. But because I always see you guys as my friends and my family, I figured I'd let you guys know what I'm going through in case there is anybody else out there who has dealt with it in the past, who is currently dealing with it. If you have any tips or advice on what I should do, things I should eat, things I should stay away from, I know I'm supposed to stay away from carbs and things like that, which is gonna be very hard but thankfully I've kind of had a jump start into the whole exercise thing because I have been going to the gym little by little and I have to be honest and own up to my shit and hold myself accountable I have been very very lazy the past two weeks because I was sick the first week and then I just got lazy the second week there's no excuse for me I was a lazy bitch so I do know that I need to get back on to doing exercise every day at least for 30 minutes a day to help make myself better so I can become a mother and I guess what I would like to do is to start a little Facebook group if possible or even if I start a series here on my channel that focuses on my PCOS journey and my journey into motherhood, I'd love to start something to be there as like a support group for those of us who have this condition. Because even though it's so common, I honestly had no idea that so many women had it because everyone stays quiet about it. Even if it's a very small group on Facebook, I think having something where we can all go and vent and talk about things would help greatly. So anyways, guys, I guess the uh, last thing for me to say is uh, I now have PCOS and I now have to live a completely different life because of it because now I have to watch what I eat, what I do. I have to make sure that I'm exercising more, which is going to be hard because I'm not going to lie. I'm a lazy ass person, but I know that if I want a child, I need to make these changes and more than anything in the world, more than any makeup in the world that I could possibly have in my collection, I want to be a mother. So everything that I'm going to be doing is going to be worth it because at the end of it all, I'm going to be having my first child and that's what I want. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here because I know I've been talking for a long Time. But if this sounds like something you'd like to be involved in, let me know down below. But I will see you guys in my next video. I love you guys so much.